quite the same as, mm -hmm. as Blue Ridge is, so that's a welcome change for us. Um, but how we got here specifically was we uh, were managing some hospitals in Mississippi. And uh, there were some hospitals that were in trouble on the other side of the Mississippi River in Arkansas. And as we started just looking at what were the potential synergies with the hospitals and the resources that we had in Mississippi, uh, the same owner owned the hospital in Blue Ridge mm -hmm. and asked us if we were interested at, at, at looking here. And uh, my business partner, who's not here today, uh, she was ecstatic. She's like, this is finally a hospital and a place I want to go visit. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so she was uh, very, uh, probably instrumental in and con continuing that dialogue, but then we came here and visited, um, and this was um, several months ago, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, got to know the community a little bit, but most importantly walked into the hospital and got to know some of the people that work there, mm -hmm. and that's always the key. I mean, the key is it's all about the people that right. are there, and, uh, and you could tell that the core staff of people there really cared about the community. They'd been there for a really long time. They cared about the hospital mm -hmm. and they cared about taking care of their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so we said, yeah, we can make this work. And Absolutely. so um, at the beginning of this month, uh, we acquired the hospital and we changed the name. Mm -hmm. uh, along with that change, it went from a for-profit hospital to a not-for-profit hospital. So mm -hmm. it really is about taking care of our neighbors in the community. And so we're excited to be here. Explain what a difference that will make for our viewers and for the people who choose to stay locally and use that hospital. Sure, so there's a lot of things. There are programs that the federal government has. And look, the way we get paid is all from insurance companies, mm -hmm. right? So whether mm -hmm. it's Medicare, whether it's Medicaid, and to a lesser extent, Blue Cross Blue Shield and some of those other commercial insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the federal government has made a number of programs available to nonprofit hospitals that are not available to for-profit hospitals. Mm -hmm. So it means we can get paid a little bit more for doing what we're already doing because we're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every cent counts. Sure. Uh, hospitals, I mean, I'm sure you've heard hospitals all over this country are closing rural hospitals. There's right. a crisis uh, right now. We really started our company for the sole purpose of working in rural communities with troubled facilities mm -hmm. and trying to keep them open. Mm -hmm. And um, this hospital was losing money, quite a bit of money. And we had to put together a plan of how we were going to take it from where it was mm -hmm. to where we're going and, uh, and to make it a viable long-term mm -hmm. facility that not only can you keep open, but you can also reinvest. Right. I mean, medicine is a constant you know, <coughs> evolution of new technology, better technology. So you gotta have training, you gotta have the resources to buy new equipment, you gotta keep up your, uh, everything that's there. And if you can't constantly do that, if you're just making payroll, that's great, you're open, but you're slowly falling behind and the quality of your service is diminishing over time. And so it's not, you know, to us viability is a lot more than keeping the doors open. Mm -hmm. It's how do you reinvest into the facilities and the people that are there to make sure they have state of the art training, the best physicians, the best pr providers uh, all across the board. And so uh, this is a beautiful community to recruit people mm -hmm. to. Absolutely. And so uh, it's a little bit easier than some of the places um, that uh, we've operated in the past. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's without challenges. Obviously the previous operators who are very fine operators of hospitals were having uh, financial mm -hmm. troubles and so mm -hmm. we're gonna have to overcome those and uh, and turn this place around let me ask you something when when I think about I'm a realtor two questions the people first mm -hmm. thing they ask me if they're older how close is it to the hospital mm -hmm. if they're younger how close is it to a good school so those are the two key okay. questions for everybody coming here if that hospital, if you had not rescued it and closed, it would have been tragedy it, for our community. Definitely. That would have been tragic, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've unfortunately seen communities where hospitals mm -hmm. have closed, mm -hmm. and it is, it's, it's, it's sad. Um, yeah. I mean, first of all, medical care starts leaving over time. You know, the physicians start leaving because they don't have a place mm -hmm. to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your pharmacies dry up. Everything starts moving away. It's hard to recruit. It's hard to figure out what to do with that old building. Right. I mean, all, these buildings are special use buildings. You can't just convert it into a shopping mall. I mean, no. it, you know, it's an eyesore. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, they've got asbestos in them when they were built. You can't mm -hmm. even tear them down without costing millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a conundrum. It's a real <laughs> problem when you mm -hmm. have a hospital that closes, mm -hmm. not only from the physical part, but just what it does to the community, the ability to recruit businesses in, and right. just the real human cost of if someone has a stroke or a heart attack, mm -hmm. Now I've got to drive 35 minutes to get them to the closest care as sure. opposed to being uh, you know, right down the road. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Now, have you been here long enough to eat at the cafeteria? <laughs> because the cafeteria was famous for lunch. Everybody loved to go there and eat. 
Yes, we've, we've been there, and we're uh, so the first couple times we got a chance to eat at the cafeteria, and we're mm -hmm. we're very pleased that we have some plans yes. <laughs> yeah. as to what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the the people at that facility really care, and they make, and that's how it shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one of the things I say about healthcare, <coughs> it's really hard for someone like me who is not a doctor mm -hmm. to judge the quality of healthcare. Right? You know if the staff is friendly, you mm -hmm. know if you like the food, you mm -hmm. know if the place is clean, mm -hmm. you have no idea if the diagnosis is correct, you have no idea yeah. if they mm -hmm. administered the right medication and the right quantities at the right time. It, so it's really difficult to judge the quality of health care mm -hmm. um, for, and I said, for the average mm -hmm. non-medical person. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a combination of having to do those little things like make sure the place is, you know, very clean, of course, for medicine, you need to make sure it's clean anyway. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. make sure, you know, make sure the food is good, the rooms are clean, that people are friendly, that people make contact with you, that they will mm -hmm. take care of you, that they care. Uh, you know, you don't uh, make eye contact with people, mm -hmm. <laughs> help them uh, around, and those types of things. That just what makes a, a rural hospital and a hometown hospital so different than going to the big city, yes. where you're just following a blue line or a green line exactly. someplace, mm -hmm. uh, yes. and you know, to an elevator someplace else. So. Uh, it's, it's a mindset. It's very different to, to work in a smaller town. Uh, it's a lot more personal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things you know <laughs> is when you're taking care of someone, you may see this person at the ball game, or you're mm -hmm. gonna see them at church, or you're gonna see them at a school activity or something. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very different than where I live in Nashville right now, where if I go see a physician there, I don't think they look at me. I think they just <laughs> type into their, their computer the entire time. And if I walked out in the hallway, I'm not sure they'd recognize me. And like I said, it's a completely different mentality when you come to a smaller town. You just described yes. a visit I just made to a doctor in the city. And honestly, I guarantee you, if he walked in here today, he wouldn't even remember seeing my no. knee or me. And mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. But he does sports medicine, and sure. I'm an old lady. Oh, ladies don't need sports medicine. <laughs> I needed my knee fixed, you know. And that's exactly how I felt. And I was like, get me back to the country. Get me back yeah. to the country. So, well, yeah. Most of those physicians either, there's one of two things going on. It's, and, and I'm not going to blame them. I mean, the federal government has made it harder to be a physician. Sure, they've sure. added the amount of mm -hmm. paperwork you have to do, and they've cut the amount you're getting paid. <coughs> so just to make your numbers work, either you're employed by a a hospital, and we employ mm -hmm. a lot of providers here, mm -hmm. uh, or you're independent. Now, if you're employed by a provider, your boss is telling you you got to see 35 patients a day. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the way mm -hmm. we're going to make this mm -hmm. clinic work. And if you know you're independent, you need to see them just to keep the doors open. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really more about the numbers and getting through than it is about how am I taking care. I'm not saying you're getting poor care; mm -hmm. you don't get personal care. Right. right. Exactly. That compassionate care yeah. that yeah. that people find in a smaller hospital right. because. Uh, you know, talking with patients. I had a lady that, when I was talking to her, she was being discharged. She was thinking, you know, the hospital and the doctors were saving her life and her husband and had, where he had to be transferred to a higher level of care. Mm -hmm. And she, she was telling me how great the nurses were, the doctors, how, how wonderful mm -hmm. her experience had been versus what she had gone through at the larger hospital. Mm -hmm. And she got, she said, look, I'm getting emotional, Terry. <laughs> and I said, well, as long as it is good tears, yeah. well, we'll take those. Yeah, and she yeah. was just, you know, so appreciative yeah. of the care that she had received And the fact that hospital. she didn't have to leave home. Exactly. Go, you know, because mm -hmm. who wants to go? When, right. when this was happening, I was driving to Kennestone mm -hmm. three times a week. Mm -hmm. Three times a week. And because nobody around here could take care of it. So when we got to a point that I could then trade and go to a local hospital for mm -hmm. care, I was like, wow, oh, this burden has <laughs> yeah. been lifted. Because I was driving myself one-armed to the hospital three times a week. And I hated that trip. And mm -hmm. I was like, why can't somebody locally? Finally, they said, we can turn you over and nothing, thank God. <laughs> It, mm -hmm. it matters because it the stress level, if mm -hmm. you're dealing with health care, the stress level is already there because mm -hmm. you're worrying and now it relieves the worry. Yeah. And, you know, the people at the hospital, they, they're very helpful, compassionate, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. want to help you. Mm -hmm. They don't. And they get to know you yes. on every visit, mm -hmm. you know, and I got tickled when I was going. I took them lunch my last visit and they were like, you can't. I can't believe you did this for us. And uh -huh. I walked in with a full-blown meal for the uh -huh. whole staff, and they're like, who does this? And I said, country folk, <laughs> country folk do this. Yes. That's what we yes. do. You know, that's what we do. And that's what we've always said. It's, it's about neighbors taking care of neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's really right. what these local hospitals are doing. I mean, 
anything that we do, we're going to do as well as anybody else in mm -hmm. the country because there's a lot of stuff that we can do very, very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, especially when you start thinking about things like diagnostics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same equipment. It's probably going to be read by the same radiologist. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to drive two hours to go get an MRI when you can get one here? Right. So it's this, you know, it's you can do that now we're not going to do everything because there's just a limit to what you're mm -hmm, going to mm -hmm. need to do and if there's some things that are going to be just too acute you know too mm -hmm. some people are just too sick for us to take care of here i'm trying to think i had my mammograms at fannin uh -huh. i had my bone density at fannin yes and that and i had an mri correct brought in that yes MRI. Mm -hmm. so i had yep. all those major things done at mm -hmm. fannin exactly and it's because it was available mm -hmm. And I didn't have, have to drive to, to the drive. city. Yeah, the stress <laughs> of the drive yeah. to the to the yeah. bigger yeah. hospital. Well, what also happens is you, you just don't do it. I just mm -hmm. won't get yes. the mammogram. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. spend four hours going back exactly. and forth to somebody. And then, you know, that's the beginning of the problem if mm -hmm. you're not getting the preventative care, which, again, what we can do here is a lot of preventative care. Mm -hmm. yes. right? And if we can keep people healthier here, mm -hmm. that's better for us as a hospital. It's better for us as a community. Mm -hmm. It's certainly better mm -hmm. for the patient population, and it avoids you know, the more acute cases where you have to leave to mm -hmm. get care mm -hmm. elsewhere. So. And I can tell you, everybody I know who's gone to Blue Ridge for cancer care has been so thrilled to go mm -hmm. in that direction see the lake, see the mountains, have lunch at a local restaurant, not have the stress the of the city because it really does add to the stress. It definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, have you met all of our pink ladies? Because there are some fantastic pink ladies. <laughs> Your hospital came with a bunch of good stuff. They, they yes. certainly did. And every time I go in, I introduce myself to the, the usually two ladies that we had to, uh -huh. at the front desk every uh -huh. single time. And some of them have been here 20, 30, yes, 40 years yes, yes. and uh, appreciate all of their efforts uh, and their dedication to our, mm -hmm. uh, to our hospital and, and this town. And did your wife tell you you could bring money and shop in that shop? Because <laughs> you, you need to support their gift shop. Yes. Because that <laughs> gift shop makes money that comes back into the hospital. <laughs> Well, I will set her loose then. <laughs> yes, yes, do it, do it, do it, do it. Definitely. Yeah. Now, Susan, how are y'all adapting? How are the employees feeling about the new? We feel very hopeful mm -hmm. and looking forward to what is going to be happening mm -hmm. on down the road. And I don't think it's going to be long that we see some very positive changes at mm -hmm. the hospital because we, you know, we love the hospital. It, and we want it to be there and mm -hmm. so we're just very very hopeful mm -hmm. it's it's so important that mm -hmm. we keep that going because when you think about if they left blue ridge the closest hospital is 55 minutes yeah. away uh -huh. that's a big trip if it you're is. having that stroke that Absolutely. you have 20 minutes to mm -hmm. get help that's yeah. that's really tough and sometimes you have less mm -hmm. time than that my mm -hmm. cousin is a prime example he had an mm -hmm. aortic artery and so he, mm -hmm. he came in to uh, the ER. They got him diagnosed quickly, mm -hmm. and he was on his way uh, for surgery, and the team was waiting when he got mm -hmm. there. But mm -hmm. if it had been just a few minutes longer, he would not have made it. Yeah, yeah. So, so important. It, mm -hmm. and, and when you think about the population of the lake, when there are accidents and injuries yes. and a possible drowning, to get to that hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so important, it's so important. Definitely important. Now, what are the immediate changes you wanna see? Well, I said the first thing we were doing was converting it to a nonprofit hospital so we mm -hmm. could take advantage of some of those additional programs. Mm -hmm. Now, as we kind of alluded to before, a lot of times people can't tell the quality of care, but they can see what does the place look like? And mm -hmm. you start making a decision just based on you know, the curb appeal of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, while obviously that doesn't affect the quality of care, it does affect, you know, perception mm -hmm. and so we are going to do um, some improvements to you know cosmetic improvements mm -hmm. to both the interior and the exterior of the building obviously we changed the name so we're going to get some new signage mm -hmm. uh, up as well mm -hmm. and uh, those are kind of the first things there's some older equipment that needs to be replaced mm -hmm. uh, we we'll want to get a 3d mammogram as opposed to what we have today so mm -hmm. we can upgrade the quality of what we're doing so those are some of the things that we're going to see kind of the next steps and uh, what you'll see a lot from us is pushing a wellness program mm -hmm. uh, because it's something that both helps the hospital because it helps us generate revenue, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it is a type of care that we can do extremely well and the kind of care that you can do locally mm -hmm. and do it extremely well. So we'll encourage 
especially you know the, an older population if you're a Medicare uh, beneficiary to, to join our wellness program mm -hmm. there's no costs associated with it I could join I'm <laughs> old. I'm old. I could join <laughs> and uh, for a lot of the preventative care Medicare there's no copays mm -hmm. or no deductibles so there's no cost and it's again it's get you know routine screenings for mm -hmm. you know cancers for uh, all kinds of different things and just try to catch things early and so it's good medicine and it's also a great way to support your local hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how can people find out about that program in particularly? Because a lot of our viewers, are my age. <laughs> some are older than me, some are actually <laughs> older than this. Can you imagine? Yeah. How do they find out about it? Well, when we do get those programs rolled out, we will send out uh, emails mm -hmm. it will be on our Facebook our website mm -hmm. and then we like the mammogram party you know that we always have That's in October a great so yes. hopefully yes. you know everyone will be uh, thrilled about the 3D mm -hmm. uh, will we have 3D by October we're hoping to okay. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. convinced we will okay. quite just because the installation of, a, of the mammogram itself takes a little bit of time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, We'll probably have it ordered by then. We're giving you 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> but it will be, you know, publicized mm -hmm. in all the uh, newspaper. Right. All the, and I think preventive medicine to me is the way to go. And I mm -hmm. walked into a doctor and he said, oh, your A1C is too high. And I said, okay, what do you want me to do? And he said, I'll give you this prescription. I said, no, you won't. I'll go home and take care of it. So I went home and took care of it by changing my eating right. habits mm -hmm. and walking more. And I walked back in and he said, Dre one sees amazing. And I said, I know, you were gonna put me on a prescription and yes. I decided to take care of it myself by just a walking plan. So that's something that yeah. would be amazing. And that's, and that's part of the education process mm -hmm. where you you know, where you can tell people and, and it's everything's not a prescription and right, everything's right. not just yeah. a test. Uh, that's sometimes the easiest way, but mm -hmm. that's maybe sometimes not the best way to get things done <laughs> right. as well. But that's the difference of being trying to personalize the care as to what mm -hmm. is the right treatment for you, exactly. as opposed and to this is what we just prescribe to everyone who comes in with mm -hmm. a high, you know, result here or right. result there. Yeah, it was funny because he he was getting out his pad, write mm -hmm. two prescriptions. I said, no, 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 I'll take uh, care of it. Then I walked back and in and did. he said, you did. Every, the numbers are amazing, and I said. Yeah. I didn't even go to medical school, <laughs> <laughs> but it was common sense, yeah. and I think yeah. that's the silver scripts and uh -huh. all the different programs that mm -hmm. the elderly people do. If we use our common sense, I think that, and you having a program that welcomes that mm -hmm. will be amazing. Well, that's what we try to do everywhere. Again, it's it's good care for everyone, and you know, look, the best part, no one wants to go to a hospital. No. Right? I mean, we've got a, we're running a business that we no don't. one <laughs> wants to go to, right? So, and it's better for you if you never have to go mm -hmm. to the hospital. Not for us financially, but better yeah, for, yeah. for you. So, I mean, what, you know, what are the things we can do to promote mm -hmm. health in the community? That's ultimately what the hospital is about. It's promoting mm -hmm. health, yeah. not just taking care of you when you're sick. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do that, but we really need to be promoting health. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do that through our clinics. We can do that through diagnostics. We can do that through education. We can do that through a whole variety of ways so we can hope that you never have to come to visit our emergency room or have to be admitted to our hospital and we can still survive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when you need us to be there we can be there too yeah. so mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome mm -hmm. that is awesome yeah. now do you when do you retire because i know are I'm you really, really old enough? Are you, are you, oh no, I'm can not you, old enough. Could you join the old folks program? I don't even Maybe. know. Maybe. No, 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 <laughs> but are there things that you see people our age looking to do that now they'll be really excited about with this? Well, sure, you know, uh, everyone loved our outreach programs that we had and hopefully we can get uh, one started mm -hmm. in the near future. Uh, Martha, the other lady that's uh, part of the team. And I wanted to team. ask you a little uh, bit about her. She's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so, um, so we've been working together since um, 2010. Mm -hmm. Close. Well, I guess 2009 we've been working pretty closely together. Mm -hmm. um, and she was, she started out on the, um, actually on the, the clinical side and she mm -hmm. was a, a surgery tech. And then at a certain point in her career, turned over to the business side, got into the marketing, and then ultimately operations. And I, like I said, I got to know her back really in 2009 when she did move to the administrative side of the house because I really don't do a whole lot on the clinical side. Mm -hmm. And this was a hospital in Manchester, Tennessee. It was, ironically, the first hospital that we ever bought. Um, and we still run that hospital to this, mm -hmm. to this day. 
and um, Martha kind of progressed up and became our chief operating officer and then um, promoted her to the CEO of the hospital. And then uh, we collectively put together a plan. There was another hospital three miles away. Uh, we bought that hospital and then merged those two facilities together to make a much more healthy facility. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of just done that and really learned how to operate in the rural environment again. We had a completely different business model before the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. I won't go into all that, but the Affordable Care Act really changed uh, mm -hmm. how rural hospitals could operate because we could no longer have any physician ownership. Mm -hmm. When the physicians owned it, they'd tell you what you were doing wrong. <laughs> they would tell you what the new technologies were. They would, you know, they would watch for waste and all, all those types of things. Well, we can't do that anymore, so we had to mm -hmm. kind of relearn. And so Martha and I did that together, mm -hmm. and I was more on the financial, you know, business side of it, and she was certainly very strongly on the operational side. We've got a great relationship. We're business partners um, today. I trust her implicitly on anything that comes up on operations uh, to handle. You know, I have a lot more interaction with the hospital before we buy it, when we buy it, mm -hmm. and then, you know, more on the watching the financial aspects of things and, you know, dealing with our banks and in investors and we don't, uh, and, you know, all those types of things where, the, you know, I, I know what's happening, but I, I, I try not to mess up what. <laughs> Interfere with Martha's yeah, with what she's doing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. so unfortunately she's not here today because she's at our hospital in Manchester. Mm -hmm. yeah, but um, hopefully, and, well, I can tell yeah. Martha, I've been to Manchester, okay. Tennessee multiple times. This is a prettier neighborhood. <laughs> yes, it's a much yes, prettier yes, yes, neighborhood. She's yes, going to she, really like it. Yes, here. Yeah. she knows that. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she, does, she was she she's does, excited. Yeah. Um, and I mean, but if you are actually are driving up to Nashville for any reason, if you get between exit 111 and 110, and you can, that's where our hospital is. Mm -hmm. um, you can take a look at it. Please do if you have a chance. Uh, that's what we're hoping that in time that uh, that. Blue Ridge is going to look like. We spent about $7 million in renovations at that hospital over the last three years, uh, both interior, exterior, new equipment, new clinics, bringing in new physicians, uh, expanding our mental health programs, uh, and so forth. And uh, that's what I'd say kind of a mature success story looks like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, would welcome you to come by anytime, or if any, any one of your, you know, listeners, followers mm -hmm. want to come by, at least you can see what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And one of the other states that you chose to work in is Mississippi, which is yes. a very, very poor, very poor state. Mississippi and Alabama are two places that we work that are very difficult environments to yes. work in. Um, both of them are, uh, a lot of people don't have money, mm -hmm. and so you're taking care mm -hmm. of a lot of patients uh, that can't afford to pay you, and that's mm -hmm. just part of what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of Medicaid. Uh, and then in Alabama specifically, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is, just dominates the market, so you don't have any leverage to even negotiate contracts <coughs> with them. Right. So it's really difficult to operate uh, in that market. Uh, we're fortunate that we uh, have a hospital there now that is doing quite well. Uh, we bought it out of bankruptcy and, uh, and turned it around. Mm -hmm. and, um, and saved jobs. And, mm -hmm. and in, in fact, yes, we increased jobs mm -hmm. because now we've added additional services. We've added wound care. We've added mm -hmm. uh, some infusion clinics and some other things. Uh, wound to care is amazing. Mm -hmm. Wound care yes. is a necessity. That's where, I mean, seriously, yeah. they saved my Free. life. Wound care is mm -hmm. where it saves your life. Yeah. So, um, and that's something that we like to do everywhere because, again, it's something that you can do locally and you mm -hmm. can do it just as well as going to, again, going to the big city to have some of those services. Uh, and said Mississippi, same. You have a lot of the same issues. You don't have the same issue with Blue Cross Blue Shield, but you do have a lot of um, a lot of poverty, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. in rural Mississippi. And the population is just not that high in Mississippi to start with. So I mean, it's pretty spread out, pretty mm -hmm. diverse. So uh, those are difficult places uh, to work, but we've made it work. Uh, made what it work towns there. are you in in Mississippi? So um, well, we just recently got out of Mississippi, but okay. we were in uh, Batesville and Marks, Mississippi, and ran some clinics in Tupelo, mm -hmm. etc. What we were trying to do, honestly, was kind of get rid of some of our other responsibilities so we could focus on on, on Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. Good. And Good you can you. understand why we are excited and looking forward to to changing yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I couldn't even imagine if the doors had been shut no. there because being that vibrant lake community mm -hmm. with people with millions of dollars invested in lake property and lake homes and then saying, my son had an accident mm -hmm. on a jet ski and we have to go into Atlanta? Are you kidding mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been tough. 
Yeah, well, and it is, I mean, it, that's part of the things that we had studied before. There was a hospital that was going to close in Alabama that we managed. Uh, they announced it was going to close and, uh, in five weeks, and we managed to keep that hospital open, and, and it was 49 years old, and so next year we had a 50th anniversary of mm -hmm. the hospital being open. And so we asked our uh, emergency medical staff, our, our ER doctors, to go back and look through the ER logs and say how many people would not have made it. Wow, and, wow. And that's a 35 yes. minute drive to the next closest hospital. So like how many people would not have made it? Mm -hmm. uh, not saying they would have had a worse outcome because there are certainly people who have a worse outcome mm -hmm. uh, if they don't get care, but just like literally would have died if we, the hospital had closed. And this was a small town of about 5,000 people and you know, it turned out to be one a month mm -hmm. of, of someone who would not have mm -hmm. made it to the next. And the surprising thing was one third of them were children. Oh, wow. Because they had an allergic reaction that they couldn't have made it, or an asthma attack, mm -hmm. or something like that, that was uncontrolled. Mm -hmm. So it was that was the part I really didn't expect. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it was when you really realize mm -hmm. what kind of impact uh, these hospitals do have, and it may not sound like a lot, but to a small town, if you're it losing is. extra, oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. people are dying. Yeah. You know, it's well, a tragedy. Twelve a year times fifty. Yeah. You know, duh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So. So. Um, so, you know, that gives us a great deal of motivation when you wake up in the morning knowing mm -hmm. that what you're doing is making a difference mm -hmm. and all the mm -hmm. efforts that you're trying to put mm -hmm. in to, to keep these places going uh, has a real human mm -hmm. component to it. Mm -hmm. Not just the job, but, you know, which is also mm -hmm. an important part of it. Um, but it's, you know, when you, you can go to bed at night knowing that you did good today. Yes. I have to know, how did you go from Connecticut to Nashville? <laughs> now that's a trip. <laughs> so I was, born in, I was born in Connecticut when my, my dad was a surgeon and he was mm -hmm. doing his residency um, in conjunction with Yale. And uh, he had a friend of his who went to uh, medical school with him who was doing his residency at the University of Arkansas in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. And he got done a year earlier. And so he found the small town, McMinnville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, no that, and um, he moved there before. And he called my dad and said, hey, there's only one surgeon here. He's 70 years old. You know, why don't you come down here? We can share office space. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think when you're in Hartford, Connecticut, you can find McMinnville on a map. No, <laughs> I don't no, think no, they no. have maps that show that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's how we ended up. So when I was about four years old, we moved to a small town in McMinnville, Tennessee. I guess where I grew up. Uh, and for the longest time, like, my dad was the only surgeon there. So, wow. you know, four o'clock in the morning, there's a car wreck, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. phone rings and off he goes. But the thing that impressed me I and mean, had made an impact on me is after a few years, wherever I went, you know, ball game, movie theater, someone pulled me over and said, hey, you know, your dad saved my mom's life or, you know. Wow. Yeah. You know. How precious yeah. is that? And, but that's what really gave you this connection. Uh -huh. This is what small town medicine is all about. Mm -hmm. It's about th that connection. Yeah. And like you said, if you were in Atlanta, you know, you're draped. They don't even know who you are <laughs> no. and, and, yep. and you're in and out. Yep. Uh, and so that was where I guess my fascination of trying to work in small town America with healthcare, mm -hmm. it just started. That's I grew up in the hospital, and um, you know, so my father's passed away now. But I'm I'm hoping that he'd be proud of what I'm doing. I bet he would. Yes. I bet he would. Yay! Definitely. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break, okay. and when we come back from the commercial, we're also going to do one song by Mr. Ella J. And I know that y'all love Mr. LJ, and I know you're excited for him to come back with the new stuff he's doing. He's going to be doing new stuff. <coughs> he's recording. He's getting stuff done, and I think it's time he does a song about Blue Ridge. He's done one about LJ. He's done one about all these mountain roads. It's time that he comes mm -hmm. to Blue Ridge and does a song about Blue Ridge. So we're going to try to convince him to do that. But right now we're going to take a commercial break, and we are going to share a little bit of music, and then we'll be back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, 
Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. There'll be no 